having an argument in our second language can be very challenging. We might not have the vocabulary or the phrases to stand our ground or make our point. And when you add heightened emotions to the mix, like anger, frustration, or fear, then forget about it. So today, we are going through some key phrases to argue effectively in advanced English conversation. Specifically, we're looking at the language of a debate and how to engage in this type of argument with somebody. A debate is a structured argument that has different parts. So in each section, I'll be giving you phrases that you can use. Let's get into it. When you're structuring your argument in a debate, there are six separate sections that will help you form your argument. We have the hook, the background, the thesis, the reasons and evidence, the counter arguments, and finally, the conclusion. All right, let's start with the hook. So the hook grabs the audience's attention. It gets them hooked. It gets them interested in what you're about to say. The more captivating that you can make your hook, the more wrapped your audience will be. Let's look at a few of the key phrases that you can use for a hook. Have you ever dot, dot, dot? Why dot, dot, dot? It all started with dot, dot, dot. Many believe dot, dot, dot. You could even say many people believe, many scientists believe. What would dot, dot, dot? For example, have you ever wondered if one child could change the world? Now do I have your attention? All right. Number two, background. So the background sets up the scene for your audience. It gives them a frame of reference and a lens through which they can understand the context of your upcoming argument. Let's now look at the key phrases that you can use for the background. This quotation by dot, dot, dot. In the year, dot, dot, dot. This question has been discussed by dot, dot, dot. Some historians argue that, dot, dot, dot. Many scientists purport that, dot, dot, dot. All right, so for example, this question has been discussed by some of the greatest minds of humanity. All right, on to number three, the thesis. So now that you've hooked the audience and they're paying attention, and that you've established the context, you can provide your thesis statement. So think of the thesis statement as your main argument. It's the main point that you're trying to make. This is the claim that you're making that you will be backing up, right? You're, you're gonna be supporting this thesis. So now let's look at some phrases that you can use for your thesis. Even though, dot, 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 the evidence shows that, dot, dot, dot. I believe that, dot, dot, dot. I'm arguing that. For example, even though people tend to overlook the underdog, I'm arguing that we should be actively searching for the underdog. All right, on to number four, reasons and evidence. So an argument is incomplete. That's right, you heard me, incomplete without the reasons and the evidence. You need to substantiate your claim. The evidence bolsters your argument by giving it legs to stand on. It's not just you who thinks this, you have good reason to think this because there is research and evidence to back this up and you can support this. You can support it with statistics, numbers, graphs, charts, as well as facts to support your thesis. So a good rule of thumb here is to have three reasons, at least three reasons or pieces of evidence to support your main argument, your thesis. You might not use all three, but you should have at least three that you can use and be able to pull out of your pocket with confidence. Now let's look at some of the key phrases that you can use for your reasons and evidence. First of all, dot, dot, dot. This is also supported by dot, dot, dot. Another reason for dot, dot, dot. For example, dot, dot, dot. This is also supported by research done by the medical faculty of the University of Pennsylvania 
from 2020. All right, number five, counter arguments. So a good debate shows the other side of the argument as well. This is important because it shows that you've done your homework. You've done the research. You know what the counterclaim is to your argument and you can speak to it. Moreover, because you know the other side of the debate, the other side of the argument, you can even disagree with it and prove why your point might even be better. And you can back it up with facts, right? That's always very important. So now let's look at the phrases that you can use for the counter arguments. Yet some people argue that dot, dot, dot. On the other hand, dot, dot, dot. However, dot, dot, dot. It is true that dot, dot, dot. However, but, right? Follow that with that. Granted. Granted, not all children grow up in supportive environments to explore their creative genius. But I'm here to tell you that education can change everything. All right, and finally, we have the conclusion, which is what you're all waiting for, right? This is where you can wrap it up nicely. You can tie it up, put a bow on it, and send it off. It's where you summarize your main point so that you can leave a lasting impression on the audience. So now let's look at a few key phrases that you can use for the conclusion. Ultimately, dot, dot, dot. In conclusion, dot, dot, dot. Finally, dot, dot, dot. In the long run, dot, dot, dot. In summary, dot, dot, dot. All right, an example. Ultimately, if we can establish a foothold on Mars, it proves there is no limit to what we can achieve in space. All right, so there you have it, advanced English learners, the structure of your next argument. You can use these phrases the next time you're casually debating topics with a friend or a colleague, or even when you have a more structured argument that you'd like to present to someone. Thank you so much for joining me and don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe and turn on notifications for this channel so that you don't miss any of our lessons or our live streams. I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.